welcome to Serenity by Sarah. If you're watching this little intro, it's because you're interested in Tibetan Buddhism. And before you take any of my meditations or watch any of my meditations, I would highly recommend that you listen to this short intro just so you get an idea of what to expect and how to prepare. So first of all, um, why I'm doing this is that I do believe in Buddhism. I haven't taken any of the Buddhist vows, but I try to live a Buddhist lifestyle and I believe in the teachings, I read the teachings, I meditate almost daily, I can't lie. <laughs> so, um, and when I'm going through difficult times, I do rely on Buddha, Bodhisattvas and other masters to help me through the difficult time. A couple of years ago, I spent five weeks in a Tibetan Buddhist monastery studying a pure text of, um, of Tibetan Buddhism, which is different to other forms of Buddhism. And I really connected with the teachings, and I also connected with the, the monk who is our, our teacher there, and have remained in contact with him. And I gave, I let him know that I was uh, proposing this idea of offering meditations, which he was up for and which I've consulted with on how to go about doing the sessions. So that's why I'm doing this and you can gauge there if you think I have enough experience or you can um, <laughs> turn off and, and not do this. But first of all, basically with meditation, the reason why people don't like to do it is because they say they can't sit how I'm sitting right now for too long. That's fine, a lot of people can't. It is uncomfortable. When I did my yoga teacher training, I was forced to sit like this and eventually it does become comfortable. But when you're meditating, especially in the beginning, there's no need to make yourself uncomfortable because your mind is gonna be all over the place about what body part hurts and why you shouldn't be sat here doing this. So it's important, if this is comfortable for you, great. My meditations will be between 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, the session will be 20 to 30 minutes. The actual meditation will probably be more like 10. So you're free to move around until then, obviously, and afterwards. Uh, so if this is comfortable for you, then stay th like this. If it's more comfortable for you to sit on your knees, that's fine. Some people have a cushion that they put between their knees that's it's higher than this block that I'm using. That's another comfortable position. Sitting in a chair, normal, a normal chair in an upright position, trying not to lean back, but if it hurts your back, lean back. It's not the end of the world. And if you have a really bad back and none of those positions are comfortable, then feel free to lie on your back like this, either with the legs extended in front or with the feet wide, and the knees touching together. So it's all about what makes you comfortable. And secondly, it's where you do it. Um, in a home, it can be difficult to find a place that is kind of solace and quiet, but if you are so lucky to have a place like that, I suggest doing it in that room. And set it up nicely, look on the lighting if you like to burn incense or candles, maybe start some of that. I wouldn't recommend having music during meditation. Uh, if it helps to, if there's a lot of noise in the house, perhaps it could be some nice background music to um, drown out the sound of anything else that's going outside of the room. Or even, you know what, some days, and I went through a phase where I just, didn't feel like meditating, I didn't feel like doing even getting out of bed. So lying in bed and doing the meditation is perfectly fine as well. Sometimes that's what helps you get, get out of bed and start the day. So don't worry too much on how you're seated or where you're doing it, just the fact that you're making the first step to try and train your mind is the most important thing. And also be aware that the mind is they call it the monkey mind in Buddhism. So it wants to go somewhere. So the minute you want to sit down and do something great for your mind, it's like, no, let's not. Oh, what are we going to make for dinner? What am I going to have after this? Oh, I've, I must text that person. Oh, I have to put this on the to-do list. It happens to me almost every time. 
and I think it happens for a lot of people, even long-term meditators, and that's normal. So be gentle with yourself, and I will help guide you to back to the focus of what we're, we're meditating on that session. But if it just really isn't happening that day, and you're just sitting there like, oh God, I, just wanna, I, I have to go, I have to go do this, then go. Because the more you force yourself to do something, the less likely you are to do it. If you can come in and come out, that's excellent. And, and that's exactly, eventually, your mind and your body will be trained to do it more frequently. So why is Tibetan Buddhism different to other types of meditation? I'm not going to speak for other types of Buddhism because I'm not that well um, recited on various forms of, of Buddhism. But certainly what I learned in yoga teacher training or what I've experienced in going to yoga classes or other meditations or mindfulness is that the focus is to clear your mind and just be. And that is a beautiful, amazing concept, but it's not realistic. <laughs> it might be realistic if you do it for years and years and years and years, and you can, you can do that. But generally, our mind wants to think about something. And while it's lovely to imagine sitting by a river as our thoughts drift by, that doesn't really give us a focus. It doesn't really help change the mind frame that we're, we're in. It will feel, help us feel relaxed and lovely, and sometimes we really need to do that. And those, I'm not saying those meditations are, are bad, they certainly have their purpose. But I think for people who have, for example, like anxiety or depression, or they're just nervous in general about something that's going on in their life, it's very hard to do those types of meditations. And perhaps having more of a focus um, is, is more helpful. And it also, with time, if you do it daily, uh, it will change the mind. So that's one thing to keep in mind. This is not a immediate, okay, you meditate for two days and now your whole mind frame has, has changed and you're going to be thinking like that. It can take weeks, days, months, years, lifetimes. You know, it's, it's not a thing. You just have to keep going at it. And eventually, you may see a shift. And I guess it's important not to get discouraged by it, but just to keep going, knowing that, you know, it's like um, when they prescribe antidepressants for depression, you have to take that pill every single day, otherwise, um, you know, the symptoms may come back. And it's like that with meditation as well. You need to meditate every day. You need to keep it up. You need to not just that 10 minutes or however long you meditate for, but for the whole day, take that whole lesson or try to find ways in daily living that you can change your mind frame so that you can become a more loving, compassionate, calm, rational person or for whatever reason why you're choosing to meditate, um, that, that kind of person. And I can offer different books if people are interested. I, I will be working with certain books um, I like some of the Dalai Lama's meditations. The teacher, Venerable Fedor, he wrote a book called Urban Meditation, and I will be using exercises from that. So there are resources that you can use to um, meditate alone and also how to carry it through your, your normal day-to-day -day life. Um, so anyways, back to <laughs> how Tibetan, Buddhism is different is that so it gives you an, an object and it's all based on love and compassion so it's based on love and compassion for yourself so that you can express that with other people and um, some of the meditations are about love and compassion about other people and some of them are more inward about maybe struggles that we're going through and how we can be compassionate to ourselves how we can be compassionate to the other person that may be involved in the situation and how we can really shift the mind frame within that. So there are different methods of meditation. One is to have an object, so that's often like a Buddha or some um, spiritual master or deity. Another one is, is mantras, which I personally really enjoy doing, but I will, for um, various reasons, not be focusing on mantras in my meditations. And lastly, breathing, so focusing on the breath. And we do do that in yoga. This is a slightly different take on it. Um, and what I will be focusing on mainly is like the, the objects, not the Buddhas or the, or the mantras, but mostly 
situations in which we can conjure up love and compassion towards other people or to work through anger or to work through resentment things that are completely normal that we all suffer from on a daily basis whether we realize it or not so from the book of the tibetan book of living and dying there is a structure of meditation that he suggests which is good beginning good in the middle and good end so how he starts the good in the middle is by saying the four immeasurables, which is wishing happiness and for suffering to be taken away of all humankind. So I will be starting my sessions like that. It is something that you may not be familiar with or maybe something that you don't understand and, and that's fine. Um, feel free to message me if you don't or to do some research on the internet about it. But I believe that it's so basically the, the four measurables about you know wishing happiness for everybody and I don't see how that can be a bad thing or something that people don't want to do <laughs> so I think it's a beautiful way to start and good in the middle is having the the frame of mind so the focus so in order to get that we will be doing some breathing exercises to create some spaciousness in the mind to create some open openness spaciousness so that these ideas are free to come into the mind. So of course, some days it's gonna be roadblocks and oh, this is absolute nonsense. I don't wanna do this. Fine, leave, come back the next day, come back in a few hours or whatever it is that you need to do. And then a good in the end is um, in Buddhist terms, we collect merits by meditating on various topics or objects. And so they, um, typical Buddhist or myself would, um, as in someone who believes in Buddhism, would dedicate those merits to Buddhas, to anybody that um, is suffering. So that's obviously somebody, even if you don't believe in Buddhism, you can dedicate all of your, your merits or, or even just dedicate, you know, the feeling maybe that you invoked. Hopefully it's a positive feeling. It won't always be and that's okay. But just that, you know, from what you've done, you hope that someone else becomes happy as a result. That your mind frame has changed, therefore you pass on this, this sense of understanding and compassion and love. Not romantic love, but a love in that you wish happiness on other people. And that spreads as a result from doing these practices. So, that the structure is basically I will be following that that structure that I just described. And we'll probably spend between five and 10 minutes depending on what the topic is and how long I talk before. Actually sitting with our eyes either closed or just on a soft focus gazing somewhere else on the actual object. And then, um, and then dedicating it to somebody who you think may need an extra little bit of peace or happiness or compassion, understanding, whatever it might be. Um, and just one thing too is that this is repeated practice. I, I said this earlier, but just to reiterate that this is not, you know, you do this for a week and you're not gonna be changed. Uh, Buddhist monks, that's why they, they meditate all day long. You know, they chant, they, they do these kind of practices and it's a never ending thing and they do it to death and then after they die, their masters and their, their colleagues will sit by their bedside for a certain amount of time and carry on with these mantras to help them into the next life. So this is something that you, um, if you enjoy and it really fits with you, then keep doing it. And maybe you dip in and out of it. I do that sometimes. I go through phases where I'm either busy or I just can't focus. 